Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is practicing how to multiply complex numbers. So here is the problem. We have three plus two i, this is one complex number, and we're gonna multiply it by one plus four i. So put your calculators away, get out a piece of paper and a pencil. And if you know how to do this, go to put your answer into the comment section. If you're taking any sort of algebra course, especially advanced algebra, you absolutely need to know how to work with complex numbers. So, you know, this word complex, it sounds pretty scary, but actually this is not that difficult. I want to show you the right answer in just one second, and then I'm going to walk through the entire solution step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the product of these two complex numbers. The answer is the following, negative five plus 14i. Okay, so that is the answer. And if you got that right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that indeed you understand complex numbers. So let's just do a quick basic review here of complex numbers. Now, when you first start learning mathematics, what you start learning uh, about really is something called the real number system. Okay, we start off with numbers like, you know, when you're like a little tiny kid, you know, think about kindergarten, and this is my poor rendition of a hand, one, two, three, four, five, right? So here is our digits, which are, of course, our fingers. So you're kind of like, you know, using, you're learning how to count one, two, three, four, five. And this is the way we see things in nature, right? There's one bird, there's five birds. So we kind of hold up our fingers. So when we start thinking about the real number system, we start learning these counting numbers or naturally occurring numbers. Actually, let me do this over here, which is the uh, real, um, uh, which is like the beginning part of the real number system. Okay, so here's one, here's two, here's three. Now, someone, uh, you know, uh, along the line said, hey, you know what? It's a good idea to have a symbol uh, for this number or this value zero, right? So, hey, how do we, you know, express there? We don't see any birds. Well, we need a uh, symbol for that. So that would be zero. So now we have the whole numbers, right? So we take the whole numbers and we have the negative whole numbers, negative one, negative two, et cetera. Now we have the integers. Then we have the rational numbers, which are numbers we can express as fractions, which of course that'll be right there. And, um, and then we have irrational numbers like the square root of seven and so forth. But this entire uh, number line here is the real number system. And this is extremely important in uh, you know your foundations in terms of mathematics. But there comes a point in time that you're going to we're going to need a uh, kind of expand our number system here. Let's take a look at this problem right here. So if I asked you what is the square root of six of sixteen? Uh, hopefully you're saying, oh, the square root of 16, that is four. Okay, so the answer is over here on the real number line. So here's four, even if you said positive and negative four, right, because negative four times negative four is a positive 16. Well, negative four is over here. Again, the uh, answer to the square root of 16, and 16 in and of itself is uh, on uh, the real number line. It's a real number. And the answer to the square root of 16 is also a uh, real number, right? Uh, either 4 and negative 4. So again, it's on the real number line or in the real number system. No problem there. Now, how about this uh, question, the square root of negative 16? Now, if I ask you this question, be careful because if you put this into your calculator, your calculator might start to smoke or kind of, you know, vibrate you know, violently. So you got to be careful here. Now, actually your calculator, some of you, it all depends on your calculator. You might see like an error. Your calculator be highly confused because you're saying, hey, what number times itself gets you back to negative 16? Well, it's not negative four. If you're like, oh, that's negative four. No, negative four times negative four, a negative times a negative is positive, right? So that is not the answer. So this is very kind of confusing, right? So like, well, what do we even do with this? And the, uh, the answer is not well, we just 
uh, we'll ignore it, right? Just pretend we didn't see that as a math problem. Well, no, we have to be able to answer these type of questions in mathematics, but the answer to this is not on this real number line. It's in a whole nother uh, uh, number system. And that, of course, is the complex number system. So let's go ahead and just quickly review this. So here we have the real number system. The real number system is actually a subset of the complex number system. So uh, when you, you know, are learning more mathematics, especially algebra, we're going to need to expand beyond the real number system and understand complex numbers. And once you um, start working with complex numbers, they're just going to be part of your math tool books. Okay, so in advanced mathematics, complex numbers are everywhere. Okay, so that's kind of a long winded review, but this is important stuff, right? Because I'm pretty sure some of you out there are like, yeah, yeah, I understand what a complex number is, or I've seen them before, but you need to have more than just a kind of a real surface level, you know, idea about them. You need to truly have a firm grasp on it. So hopefully I, uh, most of you out there appreciate the quick review. Okay, so we need to understand complex numbers. And what is a complex number? Well, complex numbers come in the form of A plus B I, okay? A is the real number component. So here, negative five, that's a real number. We could plot that here on the real number line. And then here, BI, this uh, part of our answer is what we call a ma the imaginary component. Okay, so A plus BI, this entire number is a complex number. Uh, some of you might say, well, it's an imaginary number, but imaginary, uh, uh, that's the imaginary component of the complex number. Okay, so kind of get into a lot of different topics. If you need help with complex numbers and more advanced mathematics, check out either my Algebra 2 course or my pre-calculus course. I'll teach you more than you ever imagine about this material. All right, let's get into this specific problem now. So here, uh, we know that we're dealing with one complex number in the form of A plus BI, and we're multiplying by a whole nother complex number a plus bi the product of two complex numbers is in fact uh, itself a complex number that is a little concept called closure in mathematics but that's not so important for this video what we need to do is understand the procedure how do we actually uh, do this okay well here are some main kind of big picture ideas that we need to understand so the first is uh, we want to be thinking about FOIL, all right? So FOIL is that first outer inner last, all that stuff we learned way back in pre-algebra and Algebra 1 when you're multiplying two binomials. So if I said, hey, multiply x plus 2 times x minus 1, and this is your, you know, uh, basic algebra course, you should be able to do this. And the FOIL technique is a good technique to um, do um, uh, binomial multiplication. But the bottom line is, as long as you know how to do this, then we can do this, all right? So that's the first thing that we want to be thinking about. The next thing, again, is that we want to be thinking that our final answer is going to be a complex number in and of itself, right? So we're taking a complex number, multiplying by a complex number. The answer is a complex number, which will be in the form of A plus BI, real and imaginary part. Now, the next uh, uh, couple things that we need to understand is that this i here, this imaginary component, i is equal to the square root of negative one. Now, I don't want to continue to uh, make this into a full lecture about complex numbers, although I'm tempted because I love to teach mathematics that much, but i, this imaginary component, is equal to the square root of negative one, but if we square i, i squared, okay, this square root goes away, so i squared is equal to negative one. So we need to remember this, i squared is equal to negative one, and i is equal to the square root of negative one. This is um, a, def a definition of an imaginary number. This is how we kind of get out of these problems like the uh, square root of negative 16. Matter of fact, let me just do this real quick right here so we can have a real good appreciation, appreciation of this. So the square root of negative 16, I could write this this way, the square root of 16 times negative one, which is of course the square root of negative 16. Uh, and then I could just break this up this way, the square root of 16 times the square root of negative one, and negative one is what? Well, negative one by definition is I. So four, or six, the square root of 16, excuse me, is four, or plus or minus four, and the square root of negative uh, one is I. So the answer is plus or minus four I. Okay, so quick review on all this stuff. So now let's go ahead and get into the actual problem. 
All right, so here is our uh, two complex numbers, and this is the FOIL setup, right? So we're going to uh, take our first, right? So first, we're going to multiply the first of each terms. So this is the first right here. This is the outer right here. So this is the outer. This is the inner, and this is the last. But basically what we're doing is just multiplying these two binomials. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so... First, outer, inner, last, so it's first, it's going to be 3 times 1, of course, is 3. And then we're going to do the outer, right? So this is going to be 3 times 4i. Okay, this is our outer. So 3 times 4i will be 12i. So FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. So the inner is going to be 2i times 1, which is just 2i. And then the last, these are the last terms of each of these respective um, uh, complex numbers. So 2i times 4i, okay, this is, oops, this is the last. So 2i times 4i is going to be 8i squared, okay, because it's i times i, so that's i squared. So 2 times 4 is 8, and i times i is i squared. All right, so let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we have a 12i here and a 2i there. That gives us a 14i, so we have 3. So we have 3 plus 14i plus 8i squared. Okay, now at this point, some of you might be saying, well, are we done? Well, no, because remember, the answer has to be a complex number, a plus bi. But we have this i squared, so we're going to have to address this. No big deal, because remember, I said i squared is equal to negative 1. All right, we talked about that right up here in the very beginning of this right there. So this is where this is going to come in. I, I squared is equal to the uh, negative, not the square root of negative 1. I is equal to the square root of negative 1. I squared is equal to negative 1. So all we're going to do is replace that I squared with a negative 1 or substitute in negative 1 for I squared and continue to simplify. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I squared is the same thing as negative 1. So now we have 3 plus 4i plus 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. No big deal. Now we can go ahead and combine our numbers. So 3 uh, plus this negative 8 right here is negative 5. And we have this 14i. And look right here, our answer now is indeed a complex number in the form of a plus bi. Okay, so hopefully, you know, uh, one, you know, the objective of this video was to review how to multiply complex numbers. But anytime I teach you, you know, at least for me, you know, if you're going to learn from me uh, any particular topic, I like to put things in the bigger picture context. Like, why are we even doing this? Why is this even important? Because if you're not uh, kind of incentivized to learn something, uh, and the way you should be incentivized is like, oh, well, this is important because I need to know it for this, this, and this. If you're just saying, I just need to do this so I can, you know, do my homework or pass my quiz, well, then you're going to try to learn math by just learning it real quick and then forgetting it. And that's not a good way to learn math. Matter of fact, it's impossible to be successful in math because math is a cumulative skill, okay? It requires cumulative knowledge and skill, and it just kind of compounds. Just like compound interest, the more you keep investing in yourself, the more knowledge and skills that you have, the more complicated math problems you'll be able to do. Okay, so again, if you're studying complex numbers and you need additional help, check out my Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus course. Those uh, courses really help you out. But if this video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.